Hey YouTube, good news, we got a box, stay tuned. Hey everybody, thanks for checking back in with us on this great Saturday. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's not quarantined to their quarters, <laughs> such as it seems to be <laughs> for a lot of people, at least or not for as many of us hopefully as well. Uh, but hey, a box, talk about our favorite subject, right? use our famous lake knife and I'm just going to open this up while we discuss some things uh, so this is a order that uh, we put in way back when everybody's anybody that's in tune with the silver and gold issues knows how the shortages have come upon us and this is no exception I I mean, this is probably almost a two month old order. I got this right when everything started falling, the bottom started falling out, and bef right before premiums really diverged. This is a shout out to Silver Stinger. Silver Stinger. Poison Stinger. You're going to change your name once you're done with this poison. You're going to change it to Silver Stinger. <laughs> um, this was right as that price was right before it diverged, and we got these crazy big premiums on silver and gold for that matter um, make sure okay check that out SD bullion obviously also known as SD bearing company <laughs> SD bearing supplies such as they are glued in so they don't come out oh so that's all intact cool um, so yeah, right before premiums started just going, diverging greatly from uh, where spot was going, um, the premium still was higher than what the old normal was, but under 20 bucks nonetheless, uh, which uh, was still a win in my eyes, which another that's another key point for Poison Stinger out there. Um, he's been ranting and raving the last couple of chats he's had with uh, uh, with the Irish USMC vet and their chat in the morning they've been having this the topic of silvers popped up a couple times and yeah I think I I think I had bought this like back during one of those Vegas trips when I was doing a I did a, a brief live chat and they were doing the morning chat as well and I think I got this right about that time frame to give you an idea of how long ago this order took to get here. Um, I always order with check or cash basically. Um, and uh, it always takes longer that way anyway. I'm, I'm patient in that way. Um, I don't uh, rush my orders. I don't use credit, um, etc. cetera. But uh, yeah, Poison Stinger has been ranting and raving about the premiums and I get it, but I think you also have to understand the nature of supply and demand such as it is and that the spot price is nothing more than the price of an IOU on the commodities market. It's just a paper contract. It's not actual physical metal until it converts into such thing. So what did we get here? Speaking of converting paper into silver, we got some Austrian Philharmonics. What year are we looking at? 2012, random year. That's going to be hard to... Where is that 20? Yeah, 2012. These are really good shape. Um, so that was a random year. One of the few sovereign rounds uh, that were available at the time. Um because everything else was crazy high premiums and uh, gone. So the uh, Austrians were like the last best choice, I guess you'd say, with what uh, my priorities were. I went through my priorities last year, kind of what I look for or what I've been looking for, and it's been constitutional silver and uh, sovereign coins. Sovereign mint coins, sovereign nation coins, whatever you want to look at it. Government coins, gov coin, 
just for the qualities and the uh, recognizability and all that other stuff. How's that focus work out? I'm on the wrong side over there. Hey, good stuff, right? Um, so the supply and demand issues of going along with getting your silver and uh, not paying a high spot, not a high amount over spot. Uh, and I think part of that is you just have to look at getting what is the market will bear. And that's what dealers are doing. And granted, I can understand wanting to wait until they come back down. Because right now we're looking at Eagles for like $24. <laughs> I don't know if you can find them. You definitely can't find them for under 22 not out on an online dealer. Maybe if you go to your local coin shop, which I'll talk about a little coin shop here in a minute. Uh, some of our experience around here lately. Um, they are buying, notice. Um, but the, just the very nature of the shortages and the demand has necessitated people to charge more else they will have no product <laughs> instead of so that your silver even though it is almost out in a lot of respects uh, imagine what it'd be like if they hadn't uh, raised that premium for stuff that for one they needed to pay more when they look to buy from other people and they needed to charge more on, on top of that uh, these guys were actually on an online channel talking about their deals uh, or their their issues they were having with supplies and they were paying like 19 bucks for silver eagles um off you know if you send them if you whatever i don't know if it's 20 or more or whatever but night like 19 something was what they are offering to buy back price that's way above spot still to this day um you know this is like a couple weeks ago when spot was at like 14 <laughs> or something so they're they're having to fluctuate their business process and what they offer to buy back um, as well. So it's all part of that. The real physical metal market is what it is. Um, the spot price is a, is a guide and yeah, it's a, I want to get my silver as close to that as I possibly can, but also the market and the situation we're in right now is something that we have never seen. <laughs> Maybe never will see again. And if you're worried about getting it, um, you're going to need to get it now. Uh, if you're thinking that, you know, a year from now, you're going to have the money and the cash flow to get the same thing. And you think it's going to come back down by all means, wait, be patient. No reason to rush what you don't think you need, um, as a savings plan and as trying to get it still under $20, which I think $20 is still a deal for most silver products um get it while well, i could i don't see it staying under twenty dollars for very much longer for the real stuff the spot again like i've said on the chat to poison stinger is irrelevant spot is a paper price it is just this thing that is out there that uh <laughs> some people call it manipulation I'm, I've called it that before, but uh, at, a, at, at a minimum, all it is is a paper price for a promise for an IOU for silver, which may or may not come through. Um, there's a whole other segue you can go into that. But anyway, again, if you want to get physical stuff, you're going to have to pay what the market can bear because the market is what it is. And the physical market is way above what spot price is. So that's the difference I see between the the metals physical and the paper which is basically like one of these except oh hold on i'm gonna be i'm, I'm gonna be a oh, oh speaking of precious metals got some copper on standby <laughs> i'm gonna write a big iou on here and i'm a banker iou 20 ounces silver that's what spot price is it's iou for 20 ounces so that's all that is. That's the same. It's a basically the same thing except the banker says it. Or the guy on the commodities market. I don't know if I can explain it any more, any better. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I got those right when the prices were, were just about ready to diverge even greater than they are now. Or greater than, yeah, right. <laughs> until we get to where we are now. I was also able to find out 
just this last couple of weeks that our local coin shops are still open in the shutdown. Um, I was kind of surprised to find that out that um, the coin shops were allowed to operate. They have taken extreme social distancing measures. Uh, the, probably the most drastic of any other uh, functioning uh, business I've been to. Uh, obviously, grocery stores are a different animal, but uh, there's nothing out on display, really. They usually have row after row of cabinets with all the different silver and gold products. Uh, they were all taken out of their uh, display cabinets, like jewelry cabinets. Think of it like that. That's how they got it displayed. Kind of like what you see on uh, that pawn shop show, right? It's kind of like in display cases that that's all taken out and you can only go to one of two places to get service. So basically you need to know what you want or, you know, and directly you're not going to be doing a lot of window shopping. They're not doing window shopping. So that is what it is. So I got my favorites. Um, again, the physical was still diverged from spot. Uh, spot price was a factor, but it was not... Uh, where it what what you would consider a good price a year ago, right? So I got my Franklin's. I got another five dollars face value in Franklin's uh, to go with. I'm finishing up a roll on that, and I love my Franklin's. I've talked about this in my favorite constitutional silver video way back. We'll put it up top there. Why I love Franklin so much, and have chosen them as being one of my stacking favorites. One of these days I'll get used to the focus on this thing and how this camera works. I think the camera updated software or something, apps, and it's like throwing me all off how this thing works. So we got $5 face value in silver at the coin shop, the local LCS, which is good to see. I mean, I'm like, if the bankers can stay open, right? Why not the LCS? Let the LCS stay open too. You know? It's all good. And the old Benjamin. When you say it's all about the Benjamins, maybe this is what they were talking about. Not the not the paper kind. Right? What's worth more? A 1963 Benjamin Franklin half dollar or when did that when did that song come out? 1998? One hundred dollar bill? <laughs> I guess a $100 bill still carries a little bit of weight in the purchasing. Uh, but relatively, the price of the Franklins went up more. <laughs> Where the purchase power of the $100 bill has went down since that song was implemented, I guess. Made infamous. Yeah, look at it. Look at it. I miss <laughs> Silver New Jack. That was his, that was his tagline. He'd go to do silver like... Look at it. I miss that guy. He's been uh, like UA from YouTube for a while. So I got some, I got the Franklins and a roll of dimes. They're just uh, regular Roosevelt's. $5 face to complete a set, basically. So that was just, uh, I was just happy they were open. I still hope that, uh, I was talking way back when this whole thing debacle first started. I went, I wanted to go to my favorite coin store uh, that I had been frequenting more often, and they were closed because of family issues with the, the, you know, exposure to potential viruses. So they were closed, and so they're still closed. Apparently, I haven't seen them open or nothing. Um, but to close out this video, not to even to close it out, to get to the next, to segue. Um, to the next part of this video, uh, kind of want to dovetail this with the discussion and a video I shared. Let's check out some of these rosies while we're at it. The uh, video I shared a couple of weeks ago from Mike Maloney about that he did like eight years ago about how the hyperinflation could kick in in this situation. And uh, just to kind of put it in my common sense terms, the way I look at it and the way he described it, the issue we're facing right now, what could be playing out right now is the taking of cash out of the market, which is going to exacerbate the problem. Did anybody watching this video not take cash out of the system 
when this all debacles first started. I'm willing to bet 99% of you took cash out of the ATM as a safeguard because you didn't know what was coming. It was uncertainty. You don't know what's going to come down the line. So there's some of those rosies we got there. Um, we didn't know what was coming. So people were going to go to cash. And it's not just going to be preppers. Do you think everybody was buying toilet paper? Uh, They're probably drawing cash out too. So the banks, in their infinite wisdom, as part of their plan for this, have basically pulled about $18 trillion in debt onto the computers and basically typed $10 trillion into the system overnight, hoping that would stimulate uh, money movement, that there would be cash flow in the system, that move, money would move between people, between businesses. Well, just like the cash I pulled out goes into these hard assets and basically becomes a, becomes a firm, feel, uh, firm, hard cash, That's it becomes solid wealth at that point, that fights against that. This, it counteracts that activity. The same way as people going to the ATM counteracts the activities that the bank was doing. And so uh, when Maloney explained in his video several years ago, I think it was like eight years old, um, he showed the example of pe people putting cash under the mattress, just like their grandparents did. That in a situation like this, that's what people would do. Has anybody out there not put some extra cash away more than what you may have already had? Uh, I'm thinking we probably have, right? I'm thinking we probably have all got a little more cash on hand. How much cash on hand does it take to counteract what the Fed has been doing this last two months? Basically $10 trillion, right? That you're trying to fight back against the system to keep this thing afloat, to keep this thing going. $600, that's my ATM max, right? Max I can take out in a day is 600 bucks. 300 million Americans, 600 bucks. How much, how much is that? 1.8 trillion? Is my math right? 300 million times 600? Let me see if I can do some quick math. Let me get my scratch pad out here. I'm going to do the math here just so for my own sanity. 600. 600 times 300 million, right? My zeros. 18. 180 billion. See, my math's way off. It's not one point. I was just a zero off, right? Zero, zero, one, two, three, one, two. Okay. 180 billion that people can pull out in one day if basically every American that has the means. And not every American has that means, and a lot have a lot more means than that. But every day, that's how much counteraction of that 18 trillion that people can do that like directly negates everything the Fed's doing just by pumping those digits in the computer. Every day, Americans can pump in. 180 billion just by drawing cash out of the ATM. It's been what, two months now? Some people pull out more, some people pull out less, you know, just do rough numbers. Think of all the cash that's being pulled out of the system to hoard, you know, for lack of a better term, to prepare, to be on a, have a safeguard, to have a, a cushion at home, putting under their mattress putting under a pillow, putting in the bookshelf, wherever they put their cash. How much greater is this number now, two months into this? Granted, people that don't have a job or whatever, that's a whole different thing. They're starting to spend that cash, right? So that's going to get some cash flow going. But people, are go people that know they want to have a job are also not spending unless they absolutely have to. They're pulling everything out they can to scrounge and find whatever cash they can to use just to feed themselves. Which completely 
basically counteracts what the Fed wants to do. And then the people that do have solid, you know, a stable work plan right now are hoarding cash. So that directly counteracts what the Fed's doing. And I think that that's one thing that we, you know, it's been over two months now of this and this number could be what? Two trillion just in cash alone, not to mention the stuff, other negative effects that counteract what the Fed's doing. So the Fed's going to counteract this by pumping more debt, (laughs) more debt because people are hoarding cash which is another reason to have this stuff because they're going to make that cash more and more worthless every time they go through one of these rounds. We haven't seen the effects of this trend trillion. It could take years. It could take weeks. It could take months, but there's no way it can maintain the value that we had of a dollar last year. It's just not mathematically economics, common sense, it doesn't make sense that any of that would be have the same value tomorrow of what it had a year ago or now, right? Use the common sense test. And that's a lot of the reason to get stuff like this, get other hard goods, anything that maintains value over time that is not degraded over time to preserve wealth, to kind of segue back into what we're doing here with all this good stuff, right? Um, so that's just something, a couple of videos to go check out and kind of also to talk through the process for myself and what's going on and how it ties into the situation and that this is the biggest problem. The virus is not the problem. The virus is such a small, small problem. Although, you know, you don't want to get sick and you want to take care of yourself, but the economics of it all is going to kill more people in the long run if they don't prepare themselves properly, if they don't have food, you know, because that's what it's ultimately going to come down to. People will starve uh, and they shouldn't have to. Um, but $10 trillion is hard to fight against. You've got stories of people, farmers dumping milk. Uh, oil rigs are going to shut down. West Texas uh, is going to become a ghost town again because they can't pump the oil out at that price and make a, make a living. Um, that place is going to become deserted. Uh, anybody that remembers the seventies and eighties, uh, early eighties, I guess you probably know people that live there probably know more than anything. Um, bad, bad times could be ahead and, uh, find your way to buffer yourself and preserve what wealth you can, whatever means you can. This is just one example. <laughs> so I guess there, that's kind of the, the thing when it comes to, you know, paying that little bit of spot above, more above spot than you want to, than what we're used to. You know, we talk about a new normal, which I hate the term new normal because it's a, it's a, it's a psychological warfare term because it ain't, there's no such thing as normal anyway. I hate the term normal life. Like, Everybody talks about having, there's no such thing as a normal life. There's just life. You just deal with it and adapt as you necessary, as you need to. Um, in the same way, this situation, historic territory for everything. We have to adapt and be flexible and make decisions on the fly. Could I end up regretting this in, in the long term? Possibly. Do I see it looking out like that right now? No, not even close. You know, uh, it, it was under $20 a, 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 an ounce. That's a super steal in my eyes in these times. Um, speaking of other metals, so I had this copper that I pulled out of a, a speaker. And I was wanting to ask, what is some good uses for copper wire? Nice thin stuff too. All comes unrolled. I got a whole roll I pulled out of some speakers out of an old TV. So if anybody's got any, I'm obviously saving it on standby, but if there's, is it worth holding on to <laughs> putting on a shelf and holding on to, uh, for this wire, what's a good use for it? Uh, where, where could I take it to maybe exchange for goods and services that would 
maybe something I could just exchange it for or should I hold on to it for other uses in the future I wasn't sure I haven't googled anything like that but that was just a scavenge project that I had that got accomplished when uh, there was nothing else to do so a different type of precious metal copper being a cheap cheap one but very prevalent and very needed in most electronics and stuff uh, industrial uses if you will so that's just a silver Saturday folks heavy metal Saturday I don't know what we'll call it. it's been a long chat I know hopefully lots of good discussion and comments and I hope that uh, everybody gets something out of it as far as explaining my viewpoints on the prices and the spread between the paper lies the IOU <laughs> that's on paper versus uh, the reality of uh, physical stuff and uh, I hope that's useful the link to those videos will be at the end and up in the cards up there in that corner right up there I believe whoa yeah up there um, hopefully that'll be up there for people to check out and uh, further inform yourself obviously don't take my word for it on anything but maybe it'll at least get you thinking uh, a little more deeply about any of these issues uh, and if you're quarantined you know <laughs> or if we're, hopefully we're all thinking deeply about the freedom of movement issues that are and these restrictions that are being put upon us as significant as they are as well I don't want to downplay the significance of that because that is very significant but the economics drives everything. If people weren't uh, having to go, hung go hungry and weren't having to feed their families, staying at home wouldn't be a big deal to them, right? But they're having a whole nother ball of wax, which I won't get in here today because this has been super long. So I hope everybody enjoyed it. Please follow along and comment, and uh, we will see you next time. And out there on the inner tubes, interwebs, YouTubes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just thank you all. Everybody's putting out some great content out there and uh, in this these strange times we live in. Prep hard, live free.